If you're looking into getting a Give Energy battery system, then how do you know what battery capacity best suits your usage needs? It's like anything in life, unfortunately. There's not a one size fits all solution to this, but hopefully I'll be able to guide you down the path of being able to figure out which battery size is best for you, because obviously there are various options available. So we'll start with the main three usage patterns. There are of course other fringe users out there, but for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna concentrate on the vast majority of the usage that people have with the Give Energy system and go down that route. First is using excess solar to charge up the battery. You've got then people that are just on a time of day tariff and people that have both of those. So let's start with solar generation only. You've got solar panels, you want a home battery system, and the idea is you will use that excess solar, so anything your house doesn't use, rather than export it to the grid, you will charge up the home battery system to store that very clean, well, practically free energy, and then if there's enough, you can power the house through the evening, the night, until the sun comes out the next day, and well, your house is almost entirely powered from sunshine, which is quite cool. The next one is those that are just on a time of day tariff. This is something that's getting more and more common. No solar panels, just the battery alone. So if you've got access to this tariff, the idea is you will have a cheap window. Think like old style Economy 7. So you've got a cheap off peak period where you can charge the battery up. And then once that ends, the battery powers the house through the rest of the day until the cheap period comes along again. So although it's not coming from a free sunshine source, it's coming from a typically greener source because it's usually at night and it's a lot, lot cheaper. Then of course there are those like myself that are lucky enough to have both. I have solar panels, I have the time of day tariff and ultimately I charge up from excess solar. But because I live in North Yorkshire and I haven't got a massive array on my roof, especially in winter, well, I can't really rely on the sunshine. So I top up what the sun doesn't with cheap nighttime electricity. So once you've decided which sort of user you are, solar only, battery only, both, and this could be something you're getting in a year or two. So you might be getting the battery, then the solar panels, plan ahead. But don't worry, you don't have to think, well, where am I gonna be in five years time, in 10 years time, because you can expand the Give Energy battery system. In fact, on an inverter like this, you can have up to five batteries. For those on an all-in-one system, this year you will be able to add another all-in-one battery to that. It's just not quite here yet. The next piece of information we need is how much your house uses on an average day. I would base this on a winter's day as well because electricity usage usually is higher during the winter, especially if you have something like a heat pump. So you're not using gas to heat your house, you're using electricity. If you're on the smart meter, then the information is there, ready for you to see. You can just get it from that. If you're not on a smart meter, then you're gonna to have to rely on your bills. So again, using a winter bill, look at how much you used over one or two months, and then divide that by however many days that bill is covering. That should give you a nice, decent average of how much electricity your house consumes. Once you know that, then we can move forward because there are other things which again, further complicate it. Some people will be on the old fit style payments with their solar panels if they have them and they'll want to store as much as they can. Whereas if like me, you were too late to the party for that one and it's just a case of whatever you export you get paid for, then it depends on how much you're getting paid for it. A year or so ago, I was getting paid very, very little for exporting. So I wanted to store as much as possible. Now, I actually get paid a decent amount to export, so I'm not too concerned. So these are the things that can change things when it comes to, well, how much do I want to store? How do I want to use this? So let's assume you're exporting between 10 and 20 kilowatt hours worth of energy to the grid, and you want to store that. You don't want it to go out there. You want to keep it and use it yourself. Well, in this case, I would say that, well, two 9.5 kilowatt hour batteries would suit you because that gives you 19 kilowatt hours worth of usable battery capacity. Now you might think, well, hang on a minute, I might generate 20 kilowatt hours. You may indeed, but that's probably just for a few days of the year, maybe a week tops. So if you want, you can buy another battery to cover that one week, but I would say the optimum, the sweet spot is probably aiming near the highest level of export that you do. 
So 19 kilowatt hours worth of storage should cover probably 90, 95% of your excess solar and that can be stored and used as you see fit. If you think, well, actually I don't mind exporting because the, the rate's quite good, then you probably just want enough solar energy stored for powering the house throughout the day. And sometimes it's just that, that's all people want. The thought of powering your house from sunshine is quite a nice one, isn't it? It's not just free, it's very, very clean. And that's partly why most people would get the solar panels. So in that case, I would say that probably just one 9.5 kilowatt hour battery, or maybe the 13 and a half kilowatt hour all in one would be ideal for you, because that would probably see you through the day in terms of you've got enough storage in here to cover a day's usage and you'll store enough excess energy to do it from the sun. And if the sun's not around, then hopefully you've got access to a time of day tariff and you can get it from there instead. Now I did say at the beginning, there isn't a one size fits all solution. But if I'm going to be forced into making a generic statement, then I would say, look at your daytime usage. If it's 10 kilowatt hours per day, for example, in winter, then I would add a bit onto that and go from there. So in that case, if you've got 10 kilowatt hours worth of usage in winter, I would go for something like the 13 kilowatt hour all in one battery system, because that should more than cover a day's worth of electricity needs. And you'll have a bit of a buffer there for unexpected usages and things like that. If you have a give energy gateway, for example, with the systems that are compatible with it, then that means that in the event of backup, you won't even notice. So if that's something that happens a lot where you live, then you might think, well, I want at least 24 hours under normal usage of battery backup, so to speak. Maybe you want two days. So you have to base the battery capacity around that. Okay, if we use 10 per day, then I need 20 kilowatt hours worth of storage to cover those two days of emergency battery backup that I require. It's quite difficult to get out on a generic video that everyone's watching exactly what suits you. As I said before, I will probably just base it on your daily consumption and add a bit onto it. But it's one of those things where you kind of have to talk to an individual and go, right, well, looking at what you use, this is what I would recommend. It's not difficult. You can do it yourself. But if you're not interested, then the best person to speak to is your installer. He will then look at your usage patterns that you give him. So it's worth getting all that data ahead of time and then go, right, well, this is what I would recommend. And as I've said in other videos, you can expand this, you can add to them at a later date. You don't have to literally know the future. That's what happened to me when we got the heat pump. We added a second battery in to cover that daytime usage. So it doesn't mean that you can get this wrong. I think any battery will benefit any house. It's just making it optimal. If like me, you're an energy nerd and you like spreadsheets and figuring things like that, well, you probably already know this, and this video isn't really for you. But ultimately, you can get the most out of your system. You can get a battery that suits your needs. You can go well over that and over spec it. It's not a bad thing. But ultimately, you might be hardly using that extra capacity. So there is, like I said, an, an, an optimal level. Right, well, that's it. In terms of inverters, we'll look at that on another video. This one is about capacity alone. So thank you for watching. Hopefully that helped in some way and hopefully you can figure out what is best for you. So for more information, look on the Give Energy website and by all means, ask questions in the comments of this below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos that might make your Give Energy life a little bit easier. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.